Good afternoon, team. We have a trades video here, obviously, for round 10, and a little bit more straight up and down, a little bit more straight bat with my trades this week, which is pretty cool. And I said trades, but it's finally trade singular. How good is that? And I, as I said, kept it very, very simple. And it's one trade. It's Pappenhausen out for Scott Drinkwater. I just want to not scheme and you know get things going and like, oh, I'll do three trades here and, and lock that in. I've built a fairly solid squad. I'm pretty happy with it overall. And Drinky just gets me another round 13 number. He has the best run over the next you know, six weeks until they're by 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, six games. He has the best run across it. Some tougher teams, some you know easier teams, let's say. Bunnies next week, for example. But most of the games that he's going to play in are going to be a little bit more free-flowing in points. And that's exactly what Drinky needs. Very, very unlikely that he makes origin, so I'm happy to make that call. There's a you know, other any other of the other options in Garrick and, and those types of guys that are very, very popular this week are great purchases. You know, him, Teddy, AJ, Falongo, all those types of guys. They're awesome, awesome purchases. But for me, with Drinky, I need a round 13 number. I'm looking to get KO weeks next week, and I'll be able to do that from one of a Jamin Salmon. Uh, Brennan P. Kura, whoever gets injured. That's probably the other thing as well. Like I'm going to see how Brayley and Lussie go <laughs> in that one as well. But one of those th one of those two could potentially get injured over the next three weeks, right? lussie has got 10, 11, 12. brayley has got 10 and 11. If one of those guys gets injured, then they become the sell and I still have that hooker for round 13 coverage. So I'm well extra covered in, in that scenario. If it gets to a point where I'm still holding those two come round 13 and they're bro both fit and firing, they have the almost the exact same buy schedule up until round tw uh, round 20 when Lusick has his. And hopefully Brendan Hand stays off that bench and we can get him closer to 80 minutes on a weekly basis. So hooker for me is well covered. For round 13, it's got double. Midsection right now, it is Plath, it is Salmon, and it is Hughes. So that's a position I'm going to wait until something strikingly pops up in the next few weeks or just straight on round 13. And if Salmon can keep his spot in this side, I'm going to hold him for that one, potentially for 14, likely for 14, and then go from there. But if something else pops up that's a little bit better that plays someone, not something, uh, pops up that plays round 13, 14, I think I'm going to lock that in as a trade. But for now, I needed to conserve and make the one trade. So that's the mids right now. I am covered per se, with Hughes and, and Salmon, but it's not incredible. For the edge, Angus Crichton very likely, I think, to at least get a bench spot in Origin. So if that is the case, then I have Kaipis Paul only as my round 13 edge. As I said, I'm a little bit over... Um, yeah, I've got a, I've got an extra amount of edges, and Pikura is one of those guys that I think is on the chopping block next week. And we'll see how he goes this week against the Eels, and if he can get those attacking stats and clean up his tackle numbers a little bit. And if that's the case, then we may be able to hold him and make a separate decision. Again, as I say, guys, we're, we're trying to prepare as much as we can for these first couple of buy rounds, the big ones, 13 and 14. But it's never, there's inevitably, it's a hard word to say, going to be injuries over the next three weeks. And you need to be prepared enough that that's going to happen. And you may have to make a trade in that scenario. And it could be to one of your guys that you were going to trade out anyway. like that, Or maybe it's a, round thir a guy that's not playing round 13, so it doesn't stuff you around too much, but maybe more in the longer term. It could be a guy that you've brought in or you've had for a long time that is playing in round 13 for your squad and makes it pretty tough for you to then, you know, it's just annoying, basically. So be prepared for that. So edges, Kaipi's ball I'm locked in with at the moment. Hopefully he doesn't get injured, but I'm set for sort of round 14 onwards and, you know, I'll show that in another video, but also have my buy schedule sort of thing popped up there as well. Halves. At the moment, if I go with exactly how it is for round 13, I've got Fuller, Drinkwater, wing full, uh, and Armstrong for wing fullback, Iro and Karaz for centers, and then Strange is going to come up into my halves. I'm, I'm expecting Hines to be in origin, but if he's not, great. I don't have to worry about it. If he is, then Weeks will come in and I'll have a Strange and Weeks combo in the halves. Reason being, guys, is I am going with a few cheapies, obviously. 
Some people might be able to go better than me over these weeks if they're trading in some guns over that period, but I'm looking more for the longer term, obviously having used a lot of trades as well. How can I get through round 13 with 13 players, but it not be you know the best of the best? I'll have some of the guys that are really good in their positions, obviously full of drink water. At this stage, I don't have like a Brent Nicker or something like that, but that could be the case over the next few weeks. We'll see how that plays out. But halves for now, it's very likely going to be strange and weeks coming into round 13. And then we will work out what to do with one of my round 14 buys, BYEs, uh, in, the, in that scenario there. So that's my squad for the week. Looping, Sam Hughes in the five. He plays the second game. Then I decide what I want to do with him. Sam and I'm just going to leave out, to be honest. And Pikura is going to be the one that will come in if I don't like Hughes' score. So hopefully, Sammy Hughes goes over for a meat pie. Would absolutely love that. That's for sure there. In that one, what else did I want to focus on? Oh, captaincies. A few people asked about that. I think Nico Hines... Still terrific option. Cleary, another solid option. I'm on the Central Coast here and the, and the rain has stayed away, but it looks like it might come back tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll work that out t yeah, tomorrow as well. But it looks like tonight's fine in Brisbane. So chuck the VC on a, a Plath or a, a Sarko or any of those guys that you might be looking at. Other reason I didn't go a Sarko, he was another potential options, but round 14 is a bit of a tough one for me. So... Round 13 will be fine for most. That's why like Garrick and these types of guys are good. Teddy, if he plays Origin, misses both. So I, I can't go for him. But I think he's a really terrific option. Anyway, captaincies. Hines, if you've got Cleary, captain him as well. Has probably the same, similar type of matchup to Storm with a few out, to be honest with you. And, and the way that Sharks are playing. Cleary's coming off an injury. So I would captain Hines over Cleary. Just the form that he's currently in. You could go for guys like Isaiah Yo, obviously. If you are buying Dave Fafita, he's a terrific option as well. Hopgood, I think, will do well this week. He'll need to really step up against the yeah, the Broncos pack for sure. Outside of that, I don't know if Tohu Harris is the best option this week. Head Ted team, I won't be captaining him. Adam Fanor Blake should be pretty good. A safe option at that. Could you pick JJ for a nice 55 to 60 or even a Harry Grant? People ask me about Angus Crichton as well. I think he's a very solid captaincy option if you want to go down that route as well all right i think we'll leave it at that for the trades in that team and just a quick check in on where i'm at for round 13 it's either 11 anywhere between 11 to 13 so if the guys hines and Crichton play right now the squad i have i could get 13 on the park with the one extra with lussick or braley but again there's still three weeks to play out before round 13 so so much so much to play out until then so we're just keeping it fluid at the moment we're at nine or 10 in round 16. So again, some time to sort out things for round 16 in the meantime. But I've just, like, this is all just DIY guys. Yeah, I've just written all these out myself, player, wrote all that out and uh, put it all together. Obviously, this is uh, this is done via Scoop in the, uh, the preseason. So thank you to him. But down here is all my players in the exact order for round 13 there. So got the question mark on Crichton and Hines and then got Salmon and Hughes in there at the moment in the midsection. So... There you go. That's that one there. Let's move to the head-to-head -head team now. All right, Legends. Finally, a much better looking team here in the head-to-head -head squad, and we need some wins. That's for sure. We're starting to fall a little bit behind in some. We're still up near the top in others, but uh, overall rank, obviously, at 26,000 is not great at all. Decided to use one trade as well this week, and I didn't need to go for the exact wing fullback because I've got Armstrong, Turbo, and Drinkwater there. I've got... Garrick in the center position at the moment with Blaze Talangi as my um, reserve center. And then I've got Ethan Strange as well. So I didn't need another one in that section. I decided to shore up my edge and get the guy on the rise that's beginning to be very consistent. And he's got a nice run over the next, you know, at least the tackle numbers anyway, over the next six weeks as well, playing with the Sharks, running off Hines. I'm excited to see that. And then obviously if Hines is out for origin, he just gets to, you know, do his defensive and, and, and normal efforts there on that front, give him early ball and, and, and go from there. So I think he's a guy that can average 50 over the next bit. He can make a little bit of money for our head-to-head -head team, which is good. And that's the way I'm going to play it in this one, especially if we're going to be losing Crichton. He's likely a sell at a very expensive price and Nicaragua will, will slot in there nicely with Sean Bloor and be helpful there. So also need to look at saving some trades and then it was just a one one this week. And that still means that Brandon Smith is the guy 
the sticks and the hooking position. I was looking at Sam Verrills, but even just looking this afternoon, there's a, I, I didn't read the article, but Supercoach put out saying like, oh, reverse trades question mark. Apparently AJ is set for some type of flip. I don't know if it's mid game. He's going to go to six or whatever. Keeney comes on to fullback. That's all potential. Or Keeney's just going to be there for, a, you know, utility value if they need have an injury or something like that. I'm not sure. But with all of that potentially being moved around, Verrills is probably too risky. I was looking at him as a downgrade or a guy I can get to from Pikura, I think just or close. No, probably not. Uh, I was thinking of like just going Brandon Smith to Verrills, I think, and then just going right up to someone top tier. But there's no one really I want in the sort of mid 700s in in the certain positions that I want. Like it's, you know, McInnes, Robson. I could go for Jolliffe but that was probably the only one. To be honest, I, I can't get him without making a second trade, which I just didn't feel it was worth it. I, I feel like we needed to save a trade in this one. But Cleary comes in back into the uh, from the emergencies into the starting side as captain, vice-captaining on turbo. Remember, the reason you vice-captain in the first or second game, guys, is because if anything happens to you know, a player, just say you vice-captain a player in, in you know, Saturday's game, he's your second best player and then find out in the final teams that he's out, you cannot move him. So at least in the first game, it's locked in, you know they're playing, and then everyone else is flexible. Remember, that's the reason why you do it. Most of the time, in this scenario, you want to probably put it on someone decent because if Cleary is a laid out, you want a decent score out of him. And I think Tom can score pretty well against the Dolphins tonight. Like, he should be able to get close to a 50, you'd imagine. So there you go. The main issue in my side right now is Brandon Smith. Dylan Brown returns. I think he'll be able to have a solid game against Brisbane. Iro, Garrick, Armstrong, Turbo, Drinky, looks good. Galvin, Nicara, Bloor, and then I'll loop Hughes again. Potentially play Talangi or either uh, sorry, him or Piakura. And I think it could be a fun one if it doesn't work out for Hughes. Again, he's getting a meaty this week. Blaze Talangi I might throw in to the um, interchange. That might be yeah, where I, I go out in this one. But Tall Harris with Plath and Cotter looks great. It's just Brennan Smith. And hopefully he can get a 30 or a 40. And I think this week my head-to-head team will have a really good week and make a lot more ranks back after a bit of a shocker. So that's where we're at, guys. I'll just quickly throw into the leagues there to show you where we're at. We're 6th, 3rd, 13th, 3rd, 5th, 2nd, 8th, 9th, 9th, and 5th across all of my head-to-head leagues there. So still in a good spot, but a win this week would be really helpful to get us cemented into, you know, back into the top four for some of them and then really locked into sort of second, third spot in the others for sure. Eighth and ninth, if we can get closer to, yeah, the sixth, seventh mark would be really good after a win this week. And I think we can get closer to that after a good week. I'm looking forward to it. Good luck to get, good luck tonight, guys, in that first game. It's a pretty relevant game with Manly and also Dolphins. Everyone's got a few players in that, so I'm excited to see that and I'm excited to review that tomorrow morning. See you, team. Have a good one.